We often get asked if it's possible to merge contacts in HubSpot. The answer is yes. The next question, is it easy? Yes. I'm going to show you that in a second, how easy it is to merge duplicate contacts. However, before we do that, let's consider the different scenarios of duplicate contacts that might arise. There's three main ones. There's actually a few more, but these are the three main ones and I'll go through them. Now, first is just typos in email. So you've got two contacts because in one of them, they filled out a form with a typo in the email, created a uh, second uh, contact. Should you merge those? Yes, you definitely should uh, into the one that has the correct uh, spelling. Second is maybe they've got an updated email. So they had one personal email and then later uh, a, a second personal email, or perhaps they've got two versions of their work address, that kind of thing. Should you merge those? Yeah, probably should merge. And I'll show you an example of that in a second. Then the third is what's if they've got a personal email and a business email? They've signed up twice, once with a personal address, another time with business. Should you merge those? Conventional wisdom would say yes and merge them into the business email address. I'm going to suggest you probably shouldn't. And I'll go through some reasons why when we get to that. But first of all, how do you do it? Uh, I'm just here in contacts. And under this actions menu, orange uh, button top right, I can go manage duplicates. I click on that and I will see a screen like this. This is showing me all the contacts that HubSpot has found that it considers to be duplicates. And it's very good. It's pretty smart at uh, matching these and finding them. Let me show you a few examples. Here's the first one. This is a, a pretty simple standard typo. First uh, email, gmail.com, that's correct. Second gmail.co, that's obviously a typo. So would we merge those? Yes, we'd merge that into the gmail.com. That's the correct one. Uh, I would normally click merge. Am I going to do it now? No, because if I stuff up this video and have to record it again, I'd like to have this example <laughs> ready to use. Okay, so that's the first example. Simple, always merge those into the one that's got the correct spelling. Second example might be, here's an example. Here's someone that signed up with two different personal addresses. One's a mac.com, the second is a gmail.com. Would we merge those? Probably because they're probably uh, just using an, a new email as their personal address. So which one would you choose? I would ideally look at things like activity date. Unfortunately, they don't have a last activity date here, but if they did, I'd choose the one with the most recent activity date. I'd merge it into that. In this case, would I choose six of one, half the other? I'd probably use the Gmail one and merge it into that. I'd click merge. Again, I'm not gonna do it for this video, but you get the idea. Okay, let's have a look at some other examples. Here's another one where two different per, uh, personal ones, AOL and Gmail, I'd probably use uh, the Gmail one, merge it into that. All right, now let's have a look at this third case. Oh, actually, before we do, here's another interesting one. Here's someone that signed up with an email address, Gmail, and then this one doesn't have an email. I mean, how did that happen? Because we don't let contacts get created without an email address. Yes, you've probably guessed this came in from Facebook Messenger. So this is a very good example of, yes, I would merge these because we want to tie this email address to that Messenger contact, put it together, last activity date, pretty reason. Yes, I would merge those. Okay, but what about here, this example of someone that signed up with both a personal address and a business address. What would you do in this case? As I said at the start, conventional wisdom would be, oh, of course, we'll merge them into the business address. That's the more valuable email. I'm gonna suggest that's that's not the case. And personally, we don't. In this scenario, we do not merge them. Let me give you some reasons why, some examples. First of all, they likely check their email, personal email at a different place and possibly time and device than their business one. Maybe person is on the weekends on their phone, let's say, and maybe uh, the business one is at work on a laptop, let's say. So straight away, you've got two different ways that you can get in front of them, two different locations, two different environments. So that's two, two ways that you can keep your brand top of mind with them. Uh, if they don't wanna get it in both, they can just unsubscribe from one. That's, no, uh, that's in their control. But here you've got an example to get into them twice as often as you would otherwise. That's a reason, keep it. I'll give you another reason. 
And uh, that is in the case that they leave this business, people are turning over in their roles. I saw stats recently, like it's rare for people to stay more than two years in most roles these days. So business emails tend to churn quicker than personal. So you've still got them with the personal. So keep that one. If they do change role, you at least have them still down that channel. Give you another example. They might, and this is kind of a little bit of a nuance, they might have signed up depending on how uh, uh, complex your site is, at different parts of your site, one with their personal, because that was of interest to them personally, and in another part of the site to their business email. So they might actually be getting different emails to each address. In this particular case, I wouldn't necessarily go in to check that. I would just assume that they're getting the same emails in both places, but it's actually another consideration. And then the last thing to consider is ad audiences. If you build your audiences and sync them up to Facebook, LinkedIn, things like that, you've got to think about what's the match rate with those platforms. Often on Facebook, you are matching on a personal email. So here with their personal email, you might retarget to them using that audience on Facebook. They might have used their business email on say LinkedIn, which is a bit more of a professional focus. And that way you've got two different audiences where you can reach them as well. Whereas if you just combine and only had one, then only one of those platforms might be getting in front of them with targeting through ad audiences. So there's some reasons why you, perhaps I would suggest should not merge contacts that have both personal email and business email records. I would keep them as two separate contacts. So hopefully that's helpful. Uh, they're the three scenarios. The actual merging piece is very easy. HubSpot does a good job of finding the duplicates and presenting them to you. And these are the scenarios to consider. Hope that's helpful. Let me know in the comments below your way of thinking about this and whether there's other scenarios that you actually come across and have to evaluate. <laughs>